Big Sky Ops 1. <clears throat> this is the PT-20 build. And the last video, we covered all of our major components, our fuselage, our wings, our elevator, horizontal, vertical stabilizer, and all that good stuff. This first segment, um, because there's some epo epoxy in involved, um, we're going to have to do this video on a couple segments because we're going to epoxy a few things and we're going to let them set overnight before we move on. For the simple fact, it's it's got to cure before you can go to moving it around. So uh, what do you say? We uh, put our coffee down and uh, get to work. Let's set our horizontal, horizontal and vertical stabilizer. We'll be right back. Okay, a couple things we need to establish before we really get started are a couple of center lines. Now here we have our elevator. That's what we're going to start with. And what we need to do, we need to establish our center line here. Now this is going to be the bottom side. So we're going to get our handy dandy Stanley. And it should be about one inch across there. This flat up front. And it is. So we'll get our trusty old Sharpie marker out here. And we'll get that lined up. And we're going to make a mark at the half inch point. Uh oh. Did our Sharpie fail? It did. All right, we'll use the other side here. Let's make a mark at the half inch. And next, flip around to the back side, and we'll take a measurement all the way across. And we'll mark the center of that. So right there, we're 18 inches across. Actually, yeah, 18 inches across. Actually, 17 and 7 eighths. Okay, Let's get everything to cooperate with me here. Okay, half of 18 is 9. Okay, we were an eighth inch shy of that. <clears throat> so we want to go about a sixteenth. So 8 inch and 15 sixteenths. Like so. Okay, we've established those two marks. Now we need to establish a center line. Okay, now we have our center lines established front and back. We're going to take a straight edge. And now I'm just using a piece of uh, light ply that was left over from the build. And we're going to make a mark all the way down. That way we've got a good reference. I apologize. I said this was the bottom. This is actually the top because we're going to use that for alignment purposes when we go to set it on the fuselage and pin it down. We're going to pin everything down first, then we're going to trim our, our covering where it needs to be trimmed. Then we're going to repin it down and then we're going to epoxy it. And I'll show you how we'll, we'll take some measurements as well to uh, get it square. Okay, now we have the back section of our fuselage here and we're going to make a couple marks here as well. We want to get one right up here in front of where the elevator is going to go. Which is, that's, that's actually an inch and a quarter across there. So what's half of an inch and a quarter? It's five eighths. So we're going to hold that there. We're going to come to the half inch. The next eighth over is five eighths. So we'll make a little mark there. Nothing big. And don't worry, our, right, when we attach our rudder, it's going to cover all that up. And we're going to actually cut that section out. And then what we'll do, grab our elevator right quick. And just for reference, we're going to line it up there and see where we come to in the back here. Which is actually going to be right in the center of that out in space. So that's that's okay. We'll uh, line up on our center mark up front, and at the moment we just want to eyeball it center back here in the back. And I'm going to grab a couple of T pens, which are clear across the table. Okay, we'll get our front mark lined up because we know that's definite. We'll just oh, get a good T pen. It's nice and sharp because we got some 
wood to go through here. We'll come back a little bit. We want to stay away from the edge so we don't splinter the wood. We'll pin it down. Like so, and give it a little wiggle, make sure you're down. We'll grab another T pin. And then we'll eyeball our mark center. Okay. Now, when we go to actually epoxy this down, we'll actually take some measurements. But what we're doing right now is just really to uh, trim the covering. See that didn't that didn't take. So you've got to make sure that you take it down. We're going into a piece of light ply, and it's there. Make sure we're down good. Light ply is really kind of tough to pin, but it can be done. Now I'm going to take my fine tip sharpie. I'm going to flip everything over. Let's see if, and I'm going to keep my pins off the table here. Let's see. And then, let's see, yeah, you can. And then I'm going to make a mark on either side. Just like that, because we have to trim that section of monocoat out. And now we have our. I need to plug my eye in. We have our bottom side of our elevator here. We have our marks where we're going to cut the monocoat out. So I'm going to come just to the inside of that line and just carefully follow it. You can be right on it as well because we're going to iron that back down because we're when we initially covered everything we don't seal it right there because we don't know where it's going to be for sure so we'll go ahead and slice the covering and if you're on the inside of the line just a touch that's fine Go slow and take your time. Now here at the back side of the elevator, I'm going to make a cut straight across. I'm not going to fold it over or come over into this area because that's going to be exposed. However, up at the front, I'm going to carry that over across the top because this is actually going to butt up in our, this part is actually going to butt up in our fuselage. Probably didn't get that in the shot, but I cut it around right through here. And then I'm going to make a cut right across there just below the top. That way we can epoxy that side down as well. And then I'm just going to carefully come in and pick it. In the vinyl graphics world, they call it weeding. I'm going to pick it out. Just like so. Okay, and that's trash. Now what I'll do, I'll take my covering iron. And then I'm going to go right along the seam here. Or where we cut, not a seam, the edge. It's been a long day at work, so bear with me. And we're just going to seal that down. Just like so. And if you're covering wrinkles a little, that's fine. We can always blow it out. Cool facts about Monaco. And we'll seal that edge back down. To make sure. Because we don't want it coming out. Go ahead and get along the front edge here. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what I'm going to look for up close back here on the elevator section. And then I'm going to back the camera off so you can see the whole operation. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to line up my center marks here and eyeball it straight in the back. But I'm going to have my epoxy mixed up and already and already spread in this section of the elevator. And I'm also going to put epoxy down right here as well, a generous amount. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay it down. Now that this is why I use 30 minute epoxy as well. It gives you time to work. I want to get my center mark lined up here. I'm going to put a pin up here. I'm not going to pin the back side yet. I'm just going to eyeball it. And then I'm going to take a measurement off the fuselage, back of the wing saddle, out to the tip of the elevator. And I'm going to make it match on both sides. And once that matches on both sides, I'll pin the back side. So uh, let me reset the camera and we'll be right back. Here's a little better view. We're going to go ahead and set our epoxy. It's kind of cool in here, so it's going to take it a second to get to gravity. I figure this will probably be uh, 10, 15 drop. And remember your epoxy, the bigger batch you make, the better off your mixture is going to be. So if you have a little extra, that's absolutely fine. Always better to have more than not enough. Because if you don't mix enough epoxy and you're spreading it and you run out and all of a sudden you have to mix some more, it just takes away from your time that since you activate it. Again, good reason to use 30 minutes. There's 15 good squeezes of resin. This, you know, this is an opportunity for me to show you another little trick you can do. If you know, it, here it's a cold climate, and uh, when it gets cold, your epoxies tend to thicken up. I'm gonna be able to take my heat gun. I'm gonna warm this up, not from the inside, but from the outside. Be careful because it does get hot. Just like that. We're gonna, we just did that until it run. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna heat it up in the bottle with our hardener. Kinda just roll it around. Everything gets nice and warm. Flows a little evenly. A little better for you, nice and even. You'll notice it'll get runny. It'll go from molasses to pancake syrup. That'll be good enough. Okay. I'm going to count off 15 drops of this. Like so, warm epoxy does wonders. All right, get this mixed up real good. Now we just apply our epoxy and make sure you get a good even coat and you can go over the covering that's absolutely fine and just help secure it down that's all put a little bit up on that edge okay, I 
That's a pretty good even coat. Now I'm going to flip. Get our wood exposed here. We'll get some epoxy on our brush. Get a nice even coat. Spread it out. Get our front edge a little there. Make sure we got enough. Set, our, set it off to the side. Set it on our elevator. Get our center mark lined up. And we'll go ahead and apply a pen. If he, once you apply the epoxy, everything gets real slippery and slidey, almost like it's covered with snot. But it's snot. Huh. Get it? Um, go ahead and get that pinned in there really good. That did perfect. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my tape measure. I'm going to measure from the back of our wing saddle to the corner of the elevator. On this side, that is 19 and a half inches. And then I'm going to make it match over here. Now, if we did everything right, it should match. Looky there, 19 and a half inches. That's exactly what you want. And now, this is where we pin it down. And then what I do, I'll take a little weight. I'll just set it on there and double check. Make sure we're still there. 19 and a half. Nineteen and a half. Okay, now we just let it set until tomorrow. So we'll come back tomorrow and set our vertical. Okay. <clears throat> now that our horizontal stabilizer, the epoxy has cured, it's time to apply. <laughs> The vertical stabilizer. Now see our center mark here. We want to set that right on top of that. I want it to come right back to the want everything to butt up right here nice and flush. Trial fit that first make sure everything lines up. Probably wondering why we have this odd shape in the back of our vertical stabilizer and here's why. This will be mounted, and our elevator is going to operate within this range right here. And then our rudder is actually going to come down past that. So that's actually operation hole, if you will, for uh, the elevator. Now what we want to do, I want to get a couple pins, and I want to put one up front. like so. I'm going to put one off to the side. I want to make sure that it comes out about midway through the bottom. And we'll line it back up again. About like so. Of course, we want to check our distance, and what we're going to do, we're going to check the distance from the vertical stabilizer to the edge of the horizontal stabilizer. And we want it to match, be the same on both sides. And I just kind of eyeballed it there. So that's eight and seven eighths. Eight and seven eighths. Perfect. And we're just going to just hold this secure and make sure we're running parallel to the fuselage. And then we're going to draw our line along the side and the same back here on the other side. 
And then what this is for, we're gonna trim that covering off. to the side we're going to get our hobby knife remember the center line I told you would actually come out when we trim it and so it is If you get it just outside your line on your elevator, that's fine. Because we're going to add a piece a little later that's not in the manual. It's just something I like to do to buy a little extra rigidity for a vertical stabilizer. Because you'll find out that that's actually one of the weakest links in your airplane. When you're learning how to fly you bang it it'll pop off so we're going to add something to that to kind of help prevent that it's not going to make it indestructible but it'll sure help when we if we tap it or so it won't break off now also there's something else here that we're going to do First thing, when we covered our fin, we got covering on the bottom. We want to expose the wood underneath that. So I'm just going to trim the monocoat. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to expose the wood. I'm only cutting off the parts where it's going to contact the wood of the fuselage and the horizontal stabilizer. And while I'm doing this, I'll explain something here. You're probably wondering why is it now taking <clears throat> two weeks instead of one every week. Um, we have the Avastar project we're working on as well. I'll be looking for those videos too. Um, we've actually gotten to the part where we're flying it now and um, kind of showing proper methods on handling a gasoline engine instead of a nitro. Um, there's extra safety precautions that are um, involved with a gas engine. So those take a while to do as well and on top of that we got 4-H and sports and all that good stuff you know I'm a family guy too I try to be <laughs> Covering held on really good right through here. In case you're wondering, you know, if we were, when we were uh, doing the covering of this model, like I explained before, the back side of this monocoat is actually heat activated glue. And that stuff can really grab a hold sometimes. I'm seeing a prime example of that right here. It's just, just fine, it just takes a little longer. Hey, that looks actually pretty good. 
Get rid of the stragglers here. <clears throat> Now we have this hole here. I'll explain it in just a second. Okay, now what we're going to do with this hole, if you notice, all we have is our vertical, and it just sets on there. Well, it would be okay, but it actually wouldn't have any kind of structure holding it this way. So we're going to remedy that. What I've done, I've taken two pieces of eighth inch balsa from the kit, and I've laminated them. Lamination is just a big word for I glued the two together side by side to make a quarter inch dowel or stick. <clears throat> now what I want to do, I'm going to get my razor saw and I'm going to square it off one side. I'm going to hold it up here. It's in that hole really, really well. <clears throat> And I'm just going to mark it, you know, bead to fit, paint to match, where it's going to slide down inside that hole. See, that's, that's kind of the cool thing about kits. They leave some things that are up to you to make these decisions. And if you don't know about them, well, you won't do them. So now we we'll just test fit that bugger. We go in, perfect, just what we want. So now what I'll do, I'll just kind of lay it on its side here, get it lined up where it's going to sit. Now I'm going to take my marker and I want to mark on the fin where it needs to step. What I'll do, I'll grab some medium. And I'll just put a little bead of glue right where that needs to sit. And that'll buy the rigidity where that needs to go. Some dry fast stuff on it. In the end, it's all going to be epoxied. We epoxy this complete structure, but that's just to hold that in place for the time being. And then we'll draw fit like so. Perfect. All right, now it's time to uh, <clears throat> make some, some epoxy, but before we do that, I wanna bring our pins back into the equation here. Get these ready to go. What I'm gonna do, I wanna place this one a little further back. And just go straight through. Don't poke out through the side, like I just tried to do. we want it to go down into the wood. Okay. Before we do that, that building supplies video I told you about masking tape. Go ahead and get that ready to go. Now we'll uh, get our epoxy here. All right, let me take care of something. All right, here we are. We are ready to uh, apply our epoxy. Go ahead and get that mixed up real good. I had to warm it up because it's kind of cold this morning, and it was rather thick, so I had to go warm up my epoxy. So let me get that mixed up real good. You want to do something for me, bud? What? I want you to take this, and take this, and sand down all the rough edges, make it nice and smooth for me. All right. 
just about there. Tell you what, when this stuff's warm, it makes it a lot easier to work with. this here I know we're getting a little bit on our money coat there that's fine we're uh, gonna put something on that later Let me just put a little bit right there just strain it along <laughs> and now we're going to apply epoxy to the bottom side of our or stabilizer. Like that, right? Yeah, buddy, just like that. Now, our piece that we added, we want to get the sides of that. Because that part's just going to be hanging out in space. There. All right, good job, bud. Thank you. Get along the bottom side of that real good. Just like that. All right, good job. Thank you, man. That looks great. I'll just insert that. Just like that. How big of a casting does this screw take? Do what, buddy? How big of a casting does this screw take? A big one. You tell the screw? No, I think it's uh, about the same size as the one. It's maybe just a touch smaller than the one that's in your Avastar. So okay, now that we have that on there, we're going to grab our masking tape. And what you want to do is look at the angle between our vertical and our horizontal, we want it 90 degrees, okay? Now I'm gonna, I've done so many of these. I can eyeball it, you get it perfect. But if you want, you can take a square and put it here and get it there. And what do we do if we get it there and it keeps wanting to go back? It's real simple, we'll just take a piece of masking tape We get a piece long enough to go from the top to the side. Put it there. And we'll attach it at the top there. Notice I didn't fold it over on the elevator. There's a reason why. tension on it with this piece. And then we'll check the square once more. And once you're satisfied that you have a 90 degree angle here, just fold it under to kind of lock that in. Now, well, that's it for today. Um, we got to let this cure. And then what we'll do, um, We'll install our pieces on either side here to add rigidity, and then we'll move along with uh, hinging our control surfaces. Don't forget to uh, email us your photos of your build. Chances are, if you're building a PT20, um, you're gonna, along with this, you're gonna, you're gonna probably win. Anyway, we're gonna pick the top five of um, of the build photos that you email to Big Sky Hobby Corner at gmail.com. And uh, we'll be sure to uh, get you a six inch flexible steel rule um, mailed out to you. Remember the first five, top five, top five best. We're going to give it about a week. And uh, we'll catch you next week when we go to hinge all of our control surfaces.